Okay, what is up there YouTube? Uh, this is J-Man Time and today I have a video on the evolution of aircraft carriers and seaplane carriers of the People's Republic of China or just China for short. And in this video, we're going to go over the history of seaplane carriers, aircraft carriers, and helicopter carriers or littoral type warships used by the Chinese Navy from the year 1922 to present. Now since 1923, China has actually operated a variety of different aircraft carriers, seaplane carriers, and helicopter carrying warships over the many decades since the first Chinese Civil War up until the present. So let's go over some of the rare seaplane carriers of the nationalist era and the era of the first Chinese Civil War of 1924 through 1930. And the first class of seaplane carriers during the 1920s was the Tashang class of seaplane carrying gunboats that were constructed between 1923 and 1930. Now these were originally two cargo steamers known as the Shu Ting and the Folk Ying, but they were later reconstructed as gunboats or seaplane carrying gunboats between 1923 and 1930, and they were given the names Tashang and Wei Shang, and these two vessels had a displacement of 932 tons. Their main armament was one 120 millimeter 45 caliber Armstrong Model Y gun and one 76 millimeter 50 caliber Armstrong 14 pounder QF guns plus four 7.7 millimeter or 7.92 millimeter machine guns. And these seaplane carriers carried between the one and three French made Farman seaplanes. And they had a crew of 93 and a maximum speed of 16 knots. Their armor thickness was unknown, but could have been upwards to 30 millimeters. Now these two seaplane carrying gunboats actually served in the Chinese Nationalist Navy or the Kuomintang. And these ships were actually built during the time period before the first Chinese Civil War, back when China was led by the Chinese leader Sun Yat-sen after the first Chinese revolution who, who took over after the revolution of 1916. And these vessels actually served in the Kuomintang all the way up until the Japanese invasion of China in 1937. On the 8th of November 1937, both of these vessels were scuttled in the Yatsi River in order to prevent them from being captured by Japanese forces during the Japanese invasion of China, also known as the Second Sino-Japanese War. And that pretty much ended the service history of these earlier seaplane carrying warships or aircraft carrier like warships that served in the Republic of China during the years before, during the Civil War, and during the early stages of the Japanese invasion of China in 1937. And the next vessel on the list, the next seaplane carrier to be used by the Old Republic of China was the Qinhai. And the Qinhai was actually an old cargo ship known as the the Sang Li that was rebuilt into a large aircraft carrying gunboat or seaplane tender gunboat or seaplane carrier gunboat in 1927 during the first civil war against the um, warlords that were ruling over parts of China during the first Chinese civil war of 1924 through 1927. The Qinhai had a displacement of between 2,700 and 3,000 tons. Her main armament was one 152 millimeter 50 caliber Armstrong model WW main gun. Her secondary armament was four 76 millimeter 50 caliber Armstrong 14 pounder QF guns or quick firing guns. And she also carried three French made Farman seaplanes for reconnaissance missions. And she actually served in the Chinese Nationalist Northern Squadron during the first Chinese Civil War of 1924 through 1927. This ship was actually scuttled during the Japanese invasion of China in 1937 or the Second Sino-Japanese War. And she was actually 
actually scuttled during the bombing of Tsingtao. And Tsingtao was a joint Chinese and American um, held region or Chinese, British and American held region of China that was actually annexed by Japan during the earlier stages of the Second Sino-Japanese War. And during that time period, the Qinghai or Qinghai was actually scuttled just like the previous vessels in order to prevent her from being captured by the advancing Japanese forces. She was the first civilian passenger liner to be converted into a seaplane carrier or seaplane tender in this case, whereas some of the other ships on the list were converted into littoral type warships. The next class of gunboats or the next gunboat on the list is the Weehai. And the Weehai was another was another merchant vessel that was converted into a gunboat in 1927. And she was originally a German uh, made cargo ship known as the Quang Li. And she was sold to China in 1897 originally and was converted into a seaplane carrier or seaplane tender in 1927. Her main armament was two 76 millimeter 50 caliber Armstrong 14 pounder QF guns. And that's pretty much it for her main armament. She had a displacement of 2,000 500 tons she had a crew of 93 and her speed is largely unknown but she did carry two to three french made farming seaplanes and she was also part of the northern squadron or nationalist led northern squadron during the first chinese civil war now, this ship did not serve in the Second Sino-Japanese War, as in 1936, the vessel was disarmed and reconverted back into a cargo ship where she later continued serving in the, in the Nationalist Navy or the Kumitang's Navy during the years of the Second Sino-Japanese War as a civilian vessel instead of a military vessel. So this vessel never served beyond the first Chinese Civil War and she was originally disarmed in 1936. What happened to this vessel after 1936 is unknown, but she was reconverted back into her original form as the civilian cargo ship known as the Quang Li. And the next vessel on the list is actually a rather strange warship, and that is the Chinese training ship or aviation training ship, the Shi Chang from 1996. Now this ship was originally a vehicle cargo ship known as the Hao Yang Kao, but in 1993, she was converted into an aviation training vessel for helicopter crews. She is sometimes referred to as a national defense mobilization ship, but she is basically a large helicopter carrier and hospital ship. She is technically what we would call a littoral type warship. You know, similar to the ones you see in the U.S. Navy or in some of the European navies, for example, France or Italy. Now, this vessel has a displacement of 9,500 tons. She has no main armament other than her helicopters. Her speed is 17.5 knots. She has a crew of between 170 and 200 trainees or sailors. And she has a helicopter carrying capacity of two Z9 helicopters plus two other helicopters uh, on deck and those could be anywhere from the Z-18 helicopters or even the more modern KA-31 series of helicopters that also serve in the Chinese Navy. And this vessel is pretty much a, you know, this is the, the helicopter carrier equivalent of those World War II era conversion aircraft carriers, like those aircraft carriers from the Second World War that were converted from cargo ships. This vessel is pretty much a helicopter carrier or littoral type warship or aviation training um, warship that was converted from a vehicle cargo ship known as the Hao Yang Kao, and she still serves to this very day. And this ship was completed in 1996, and I believe this was originally meant to be a class of warship, 
but China had at that point hadn't really invested in aircraft carriers and would not invest in aircraft carriers until they started purchasing old ex-Soviet aircraft carriers from the Soviet Union starting also in the 1990s. And that brings us to the next true aircraft carrier on the list and that is the Leoning. Leoning was originally known as the Soviet aircraft carrier Varyag or Varyag or also known as the Soviet aircraft carrier Riga which was constructed between 1985 and 1988. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, she was later sold to the People's Republic of China, which she actually stayed in storage for many years. That was until the early 2000s, where the Chinese actually got the idea to put the carrier in full service. Now, keep in mind, the Chinese had actually purchased other aircraft carrying warships from the Soviet Union, mostly helicopter carriers, that are mostly used as museum ships nowadays in China, rather than actual aircraft carriers. Now, the Varag or Viag was the first to be refurbished into a fully functioning aircraft carrier, and in 2012, she was given the name Leoning, becoming China's first fleet carrier to enter service with the Chinese Navy and Chinese naval history. Now, this vessel has a full displacement of 60,000 tons. Her main armament is pretty large. She has a three 18 barreled HQ-10, also known as the FL-3000N surface to air missile system. She has a three 11 barreled Type 30 slash 80, also known as the Model 1130 of surface to air missiles. She also has a two six barreled RBU-12000 missiles. And she also has, she also has an aircraft carrying capacity of 48 aircraft. This includes the J-15 fighter aircraft or the naval variation of the Chinese J-15 fighter aircraft. And she also carries multiple helicopters of the Z-18F, Z-18J, and Z-9C class of helicopters. But she could also carry some of the modern Ka-31 series of helicopters that are also used by the Chinese Navy. She has a crew of 2,500. Her speed is 30 knots. Her armor thickness is really unknown because most nations don't really give the armor specifications on their aircraft carriers. The Leoning is still in service to this very day, being the first aircraft carrier in the Chinese Navy and pretty much being the backbone of the People's Liberation Navy, which is the actual name of the Chinese Navy. Now, the Leoning has actually spawned a new series of aircraft carriers. In fact, China has now begun mass producing aircraft carriers and they actually have three other aircraft carriers, one that is in service and two more under construction. And that brings us to the next aircraft carrier on the list, the Shangdong or Shangdong from 2017. Now, this aircraft carrier is a much larger version version of the Leoning. Her displacement is 65,000 to 70,000 tons. Her main armament is four 24-barreled HQ-9 surface-to-air missile systems. She also carries four 11-barreled Type 30 slash 80 type 1130 um, anti-aircraft slash anti-ship missiles. And she also carries a two six-barreled RBU 12,000 missiles. Her armor thickness is largely unknown. Her speed is 30 knots or 35 miles per hour. And she has an increased crew capacity of 4,000. And she also carries a variety of Chinese made military aircraft, including 48 aircraft in total, including 24 J-15 fighter aircraft or the naval variation of the J-15 fighter aircraft. She also carries 12 Z-18 F, Z-18J, or Z-9C helicopters, 
or 12 KA-31 naval helicopters. The Shangdong is one of an entire class of aircraft carriers, actually. There are two other ships based on the Shangdong that are currently under construction, and that is the aircraft carrier known as the 003 and the 004. Neither of those two carriers have a name yet, but those carriers are meant to enter service around the years 2021 through 2025. So the Shangdong is kind of a class of carriers in its own right, and it is the largest class of aircraft carrier currently serving in the Chinese Navy. And that's pretty much it for the evolution of Chinese aircraft carrying warships over the many decades that the Chinese have been producing aircraft carrying warships, whether it be seaplane carriers, helicopter carriers, or full-sized fleet carriers. So what do you all think of these aircraft carriers? Uh, please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time signing off.